against Harden. Doncic lines it up. It goes! He is that guy! Things are starting to heat up in the playoffs as the teams that got punched in game one now come back swinging. The Clippers blew away the Mavs in the opening game, even without Kawhi. And with him back on the court for game two, the hopes were high in LA. However, Luka and Kyrie came ready to play last night, especially Doncic, as he scored 12 points in the first quarter, including some tough shots. Clippers are 3 of 14 from the field. Doncic, cha -ching! A three! On the other side, the Clippers, who were scorching hot from downtown in the previous game, struggled a lot in this one. Man just made one from there. Here's Leonard. Fire, it's off. James Harden was desperate, shooting 0 for 5 from 3 point range in the first half, but he made sure to still get his points as he was attacking the basket and working the defenders for some easy mid range shots. Just one trailed by as many as eight. Harden around Exum. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Tough shot for Harden. Oh, it goes! Counted on a foul! It was a tight game, however, as Dallas led by only 4 points at halftime. And after being quiet for 24 minutes, Kawhi Leonard started the third quarter with a bang. First time since March 31st as Kawhi timely enough gets the dunk there. He was doing the little things, hustle plays like this offensive rebound and put back layup. The Clippers even took the lead at the end of the third quarter and continued building the momentum in the fourth as well. Harden with the jab, shot clock down to 2, down to 1, pass! A grenade goes from Norman Powell with the deep shot. 71 67. Doncic to Lively is blocked by Westbrook. And with this layup by Zubats, LA went up by six, and Kidd was forced to call a timeout as the home crowd erupted. So, facing a possible 2 0 series deficit, the Mavs knew that they had to respond. And they did it in the best possible way, going guns blazing on a 14-0 run to regain control of the game. Doncic gets into it quickly, lines it up. Luka Doncic is lethal! 9-0 run for the Mavericks. Directing traffic, 5 to shoot. It's gonna be Kyrie on the drive. Irving floats it up and in! And in crunch time, unlike the first game, the role players for the Mavs responded to the call by hitting some huge timely shots, keeping the two possession lead. Sacic. Knock away for a moment. Beach George. Kick out. Kleba. Splash! But with a minute and a half remaining, Luka shuts down the arena because. Doncic. Five to shoot. Against Harden. Doncic lines it up. It goes! He is that! Then he made sure to let the fans know that he's got this one in the bag. It wouldn't be so easy though, because he's cold blooded. And Harden answers with a wide open three. George, the drive, the dish, the dunk for Zubats. We've got a four point game with 44.8 to play. This would then turn into a free throw shootout, and Dallas were able to do just enough to put the Clippers away in this game and even the series going back home. So, on Raid Game, the app that I'm a part of, I gave this one an 8.2 for the interesting finish and back and forth battle. Moving on to the Bucks and the Pacers, where Indy wanted to forget that horrific start of 3 for 18 from downtown in the first half of Game 1, where they fired away a bunch of bricks. And boy, they were blazing hot in this one. Halliburton pull up 3, and buries it. Halliburton. Indiana shot 10 for 21 from downtown in the first half, a blistering 47.5%. Despite the hot start though, you definitely notice that it's Siakam who's got the most playoff experience as he once again carried the scoring load by getting to his spots for some easy points. Now Siakam posted up Portis, great matchup here, Bucket grinding the window with an angle counted on the foul. A superb 21 point half on 57% from the field. But thing is, on the other end, Dame picked up exactly where he left off in game one. That one rimming out, now Lillard. He was brilliant, pull up jumper. Got it. He squad. Lillard, quick release. Again. Lillard once again had a monster first half with 6 laser threes for 26 points, but the all-around effort from Indiana gave them a 5-point lead at the break, as it was clear that they've shaken off the Game 1 jitters. This would set up a back-and-forth battle in the third, where the Pacers would not back down. In fact, they built onto their lead entering the fourth quarter at plus 8. They swing it. 
Halliburton down the lane on the Euro, off the glass. And in. Siakam drops, stops, pops, and hits. This leads us to the final period, where I was prepared to watch a dogfight till the final buzzer, but it seems like the Pacers disagreed, and they came out ready to put an end to this game early in the fourth. Connell making him work hard, outlet pass, Shepard on the move, double pump, holy macro! Now Siakam. Step back, 15, pure. Pascal. Cross court, inside, Pascal, turn around, J. The Pacers absolutely blitzed Milwaukee with a 23-9 run to start the fourth, building out a 23-point lead and pretty much sealing the deal by the 6-minute mark. A phenomenal response to the Game 1 debacle, once again led by Siakam with another electric performance of 37 points, 11 rebounds and 6 assists. They could care less that this game did not have a dramatic ending and that I only rated it a 6.3 on Raid Game. A huge win for Indiana to steal home court advantage. Now, nobody could have imagined that the Timberwolves vs. Suns game would start with this. Looking to push, coughs it up. Another turnover. Fourth for the Suns. Look at the French spin in the open floor. He flicks it up and his prayer is answered. Rudy Gobert on the highway, going coast to coast with a janky Euro step, barreling straight into Nurkic, then throwing a wild shot at the rim and hitting it, plus the foul. My goodness, he was a perfect 5 for 5 in the first half, and along with Mike Conley and Jaden McDaniels, kept the team afloat while the Top Guns, Edwards, and Towns combined for only 7 points till the break. Thing is, Phoenix didn't capitalize on that as they shot a miserable 3 for 11 from downtown during that time and were up by only one at halftime. Both teams knew what's at stake here and the temperature started reaching the boiling point, so... Isolated, backs him down to the box, leans in and puts it down. Devin Booker, really physical at that wing position, does a great One job. Look out, Booker and McDaniels have to be separated. You can see it as they came down the floor, a little pushing and shoving between them. Officials quickly get between to try to defuse things. And we saw a similar scenario to Game 1 playing out in the third, as Minnesota once again jumped on Phoenix to get out to a double-digit lead. Here we go right here, Edwards against Durant. Edwards wants to take him, elevates, and buries it. Edwards, double team, gets it to Alexander Walker. Now McDaniels out of the corner. Spins, but he's got everything working tonight. Edwards going right back at him into the corner. Alexander Walker fills it up with a corner pocket three. And just like Indiana, they stepped on the gas pedal in the fourth quarter to put an end to this game as early as possible. McDaniels! Edwards. Yes, sir! The fans explode as they can feel this game opening up and a second win being within reach. And that's exactly what happened. There was never any doubt in the finish, and the Timberwolves defend their home court now going to Phoenix with a 2 0 lead. KD, Book, and Beal will have a lot of work to do if they want to come back in the series, but there's no way I'm writing them off that easily. Download Raid Game from the link in the description and join me in raiding these games. These three were solid but nowhere near the greatest night of the playoffs that I broke down in my last video. You gotta check out all the chaos that happened right here. Talk to you in the next one, peace out.